talk is, your code is flawless, but how you doing? Uh, I'm Dave Carroll. Um, I guess sometimes people know me as the Dave Carroll. So, uh, and this is Andrew Plog, going to be my co-host. <clears throat> Get it to know. Yeah, now it's on. Hello, hello. There we go. So, first off, we want to our sponsors. Uh, without them, we be able to be here. Uh, so, we're going to A lot. <laughs> a lot of pop culture references, things like that. Uh, we saw the Nike Bar for, and I've been struggling with this for a while. For a while. Yep, and I'm Andrew, and uh, I'm the Power Show podcast co host, father of two. To say, as I prefer humans to computers, as I've gone through my career, I've really found that I enjoy the people aspect of things, and how efficient it is, and it's a good way to direct your efforts. So one of the things we definitely want to state is we're not medical professionals. Uh, so um, just, uh, yeah, we're going to check about our perspectives, kind of where we're coming from, get the conversation started a little bit. Um, hopefully make things a little bit more approachable and in the future. The goals we have for this is um, we want to increase awareness and understanding of uh, you know, mental health in general. And um, we also want to encourage self care and resilience. And we want to foster and acceptance. One of the things is that uh, mental health is usually a stigma topic, people don't want to talk about it. But uh, hopefully, you know, this will, this talk is going to help you want to be a little more open to, uh, to discuss it with, with friends. Yeah, and I think that, you know, there's no way that we could just fix things quickly. Uh, as things kind of go through the world, we're hoping to keep improving as people. And this is one small way as we, we take the next step. We have conversations, we put ourselves in uncomfortable positions, and uh, we try to learn from each other. The, I asked a little prematurely. How are you doing? How you? How you? There. One of the things that we don't really think about too much. I actually have a short video on me. How are you doing? Imagine being a refrigerator and sometimes. So, uh, first off, the, with flawless code or what could be considered perfect code, uh, it's really a misnomer because no, there is no perfect code, uh, but there's always better code, right? Uh, so. Yeah, things can always get better. You can take that next step and improve things. It's never a solved situation. Right. The uh, we all have, and also there's with like no, there's also no perfect person. We all have flaws and faults. <clears throat> um, so we're going to examine how one can go about writing better code, and at the same time, kind of see how we can be better people. Um, you know, with uh, better. Uh, healthy people yeah, uh, kind of in those ways. and how we can yeah integrate things a little bit and I wanted to before we move on to the next slide kind of talk about where why do we do this talk where did it kind of come from I know you reached out to me a while ago but yeah I guess at this point I wanted to kind of shout out to Dave this was his idea um, I'm really excited to be along for the ride with you and, and it's been an awesome journey for us to kind of work on this talk together um, 
Yeah, so um, um, I've been <clears throat> always the odd character, the, you know, the you're not right kind of guy for as long as I can remember. And, um, you know, part of this talk will be kind of discussing, like, you know, our own um, uh, paths to mental health and, and also just um, uh, the stuff that I went through recently uh, for uh, diagnostics. Um, and we'll uh, probably move on from, from that. Um, <clears throat> so uh, first off with, <clears throat> with code, there is, uh, whether it's perfect, it's really, is it perfect for uh, right now or is it perfect for this particular thing? Uh, so like, you know, you, in code, you wanna strive for readability, you wanna strive for maintainability, uh, but sometimes you might want to do, you know, strive for, you know, the fewest lines of code, like um, uh, with the go code golf that uh, Kevin's going to have uh, tomorrow. Uh, so, you know, in in code golf, if you if you have a, you know, like a seven or eight line uh, function, that's going to not win at code golf. But if you have a fun, you know, like uh, the code that does the same thing as the function, in like you know, 30 characters, that's probably going to be a better chance of winning. So it's always about being subjective and contextual um, in, in writing the best code or better code. And with that, also, you are uh, contextual as well. You, uh, you change daily. You grow daily. Uh, your context changes daily. Um, you know, who you are t you know, today is different than who you were, you know, 10, maybe even 10 hours ago or... 10 years ago, uh, and you're going to be different 10 years from now. Um, so one of the one of the things is the um, um, how do we get to be better at at writing code? Well, you got to learn the um, uh, you got to learn the language uh, like PowerShell. You've got to build up your skills too. Uh, you got to learn the syntax, the terminology, and in a similar fashion, you have to learn how to introspect, you know, yourself, and you have to, you know, have the goal of uh, of healing and becoming a better you. Um, and you got to build up the skills uh, that that's going to help you. Like, we're not given a manual, um, you know, like um, uh, Greatest American Hero TV show from the '80s. The guy was given a superhero suit and. He was, you know, he was going to do great things, but he lost the manual in like the first episode. So he had to like figure out things as he goes, and that's exactly what we're all doing: figuring out things as as we go. Um, and uh, hopefully, want to kind of talk a little bit about some of the terminology as well. Um, so something else that you can do with to write better code is to have parameter validation. Like uh, you want to specify the required type uh, when you're doing the, you know, when you're accepting input. Uh, is it going to be mandatory or optional? Uh, do you want to use validators like validate set, validate pattern, or any other validate attribute? Uh, but what would your parameters be? Um, your, uh, your input and direction from others is probably going to be a parameter. Like, uh, I need you to do this, or I want to, you know, to converse with you about, about that particular topic. Uh, so anytime you want to take the mic away, please do so. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry, it's a slightly clunky for me. Um, yeah, input and direction from others. So I guess I would ask you, so what would the benefit of the input and direction from others be? How would you use that as input, right? How would you use that to alter your behavior and actions and those types of things? So <clears throat> I think if... Um, uh, if we're talking about something very technical, then I know I would need to put on my technical hat. If we're talking about something, you know, personal or, you know, even, you know, comics or, or TV or anything like that, then that's, that's kind of different hats that you want to put on. So um, you want to kind of tailor what your, your – you, you want to focus what the, on, on the topic itself. Um, and, you know, that's kind of – you know, you don't want to use uh, get AD user to try to get, you know, computer information. 
So it sounds like you're more referring to it as like input and direction from others in social situations to kind of guide you. What's appropriate here? Is it appropriate for me to do this or that? In certain circumstances, it might be and others not. But is that what you're kind of referring to with this is? Yeah, awesome. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, you, you don't want to, um, you also want to be open to actual input too, right? So you don't want to be closed off and, and like already defensive or anything like that. It's like, um, uh, yeah, so you, you definitely don't want to do that. <clears throat> um, but but how how would you validate the input from from others? Um, well, <clears throat> you need to define what you what the input needs to be. You know, just like with the validate said, you say you know I want only these things are going to be acceptable, and you have to define. You know, when we're talking about topics, especially topics that are going to be. Uh, you know, potentially triggering or, or even just talking and then you happen to get, um, you know, someone has says something that kind of brings up something from your history. Uh, you want to clearly state, you know, look, I don't want to talk about this or talk about that. And um, uh, and most like d and settings, uh, Dungeons and Dragons settings now or other tabletop role-playing games, they have a thing called Session Zero where it you basically sign up um, you know, these are the topics that, you know, I'm okay with. These are the topics that I definitely don't want to deal with, or these are the topics that, you know, I'm definitely want this in my, you know, in the game or whatever. Uh, but it kind of helps put everybody on the same, same playing field. So you, you know, you won't go into you know, a session all of a sudden, you know, they, they have a topic, uh, you know, about, um, I don't know, spousal abuse or something like that. And you go, Oh, I don't really want to do that because that. That's too close to you know too close to home, and I don't want to talk about that. All of that stuff is kind of helping define what you know how the how the communication should be engaged with. So it sounds like in this slide we kind of have some in the input and direction from others. It sounds like some kind of self awareness type stuff where being aware of where you are, how you're interacting, and then uh, with the other one clearly to find the input. It kind of sounds like you're talking about setting boundaries and making sure that you're setting yourself up for success. If you know how you work best and are aware of what, you know, some of the uh, things that you struggle with are, you can put yourself in more situations to succeed and not have uh, negative outcomes. Yeah, and uh, I think one of the other things that we had uh, talked about, uh, you and I, earlier was um, about, uh, you know, where are we eating, right? You know, that, that's, that's one of the things that is most cringe with a lot, um, a lot of others. But, you know, so you need to know what you, you need to know what you need in a situation and you need to let the other people know. Um, if you don't speak up, you know, your expectations may not be met <clears throat> and it's it could actually cause, um, you know, some extra pain for you. Yeah. And when it comes to speaking up in situations, it can personally be really hard. Um, and I mean, just in general, it is a really hard thing. Uh, but if you're able to do it, you and by doing it in a safe way and having other people see it, setting boundaries, um, it really provides a great level of psychological safety that just improves everything, whether that's a work context, a personal context, um, being able to communicate your boundaries and then respect them and understand that be a safe person that people can communicate their boundaries to you leads to a lot more positive interactions and outcomes, leads to a lot richer relationships, a lot better communication. That's right. Um, so um, the, the next thing we, we want to talk about is debugging. So how you get really good code is you also go through the debugging process. Um, you know, do you use simple console output? Do you use the, the right commandlets? Uh, do you use debugging tools within your code ed editor? Uh, or do you use debugging with PS breakpoints in the, uh, in the console? <clears throat> but how would you go about debugging yourself? Um, so that's gonna take, you know, a lot of, um, uh, a lot of introspection. And um, you, you know, for you to dig into what actually was, uh, what drives your actions and, and your behavior. Uh, one of the ways you can do that is through journaling, uh, again, through introspection and uh, mindfulness, uh, paying attention to your present thoughts and your feelings uh, about in, in, the, in the moment itself. 
Uh, it's also you know, about health, you know, physical health. Uh, your physical health can directly impact your, your mental health as well. Um, like, do you, are you getting enough sleep? Um, are you getting enough, you know, the right nutrients in your diet? Uh, are you exercising or are you going up a mountain because uh, Phil decided to take you up a, a treacherous trek? Um, and, uh, <clears throat> uh, but anyway, uh, also it's, uh, it's about being open to, to, uh, feedback and change. Um, it's a help, help you, uh, connect with others. Um, and, you know, for like debugging, you could also uh, hire a consultant or, you know, professional help sometimes with that. Um, it, it relies so much on perspective and it's, um, it's going to be, it could be very challenging to, to consider like all of the sides of uh, all of the pieces of the puzzle. The, uh, another thing that you can do when you're writing perfect code is to deal with error handling. Like how do you properly catch exceptions and errors? Um, you know, hopefully we all know about the try catch finally. Um, and also you should know about terminating versus non terminating errors. Um, and also you don't want to swallow up errors like in lower level code. Uh, so, uh, what's displayed to the user is it should be very relevant. Um, and it needs to be concise and actionable errors. Um, so with, um, <coughs> uh, error handling on you know, on the self, you know, high anxiety or, you know, otherwise being triggered is going to be the error that you're going to have to deal with. Um, you know, first off, you have to realize, uh, actually, something happened and I am going to be acting, I am, I, my body is going to react negatively to it. Um, so you have to realize that. Also, um, when that happens, you have to kind of take your, you know, take a step back and just realize. So it's like, like the the, uh, the the event or whatever happens in the try, and then the catch is you taking a step back and, and realizing, you know, what, what, what really just happened here. Um, and, you know, I need to handle this behavior that's a, that, that I'm about, you know, I need to examine the behavior, make sure that uh, what I'm about to, um, uh, you know, return into the conversation with is not going to be, um, uh, disjointed or uh, disruptive. Um, and, and sometimes it's, you know, it's hard to say, you know, well, calm down, you know, to other people. And sometimes you don't even think about telling yourself to calm down. Um, <clears throat> so you, you need to examine, examine what happened and also uh, determine what, what actually triggered it. Uh, that way you can, you know, have like a an identifying thing that will help you in the future to be able to like catch that specific error type, uh, essentially. Um, and uh, one of the things is, you know, it'll also help you identify and establish boundaries, uh, you know, with, with people and, and in the, uh, and in conversations. Um, yeah, so one of the things, um, um, and, and if you want to talk about Oh, sure. Yeah. So uh, there was a situation where um, it was a great example of my one of my first interactions with Dave. And there was a situation where he was having a conversation that wasn't the most productive. Um, it wasn't necessarily heated, but it was a little unintentionally aggressive, I'd say. Um, passionate, but could, you know, a little dicey. And uh, you went about communicating that, you know, something's not working here for me. I, I might need to step away from the conversation. Uh, the person you're communicating it with was fortunately receptive to that feedback and say, hey, I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to come across that way. Um, and then I think you were able to kind of come back at it, understanding each other's boundaries a little bit more. The other person you were interacting with was able to consider kind of where you're coming from and your perspective, obviously always different, right? And um, yeah, I think that it ended up in a productive conversation for you in the end. But yeah, you can speak to that a little bit. Yeah, I think it was about maybe 10 or 15 minutes into the interaction. I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. <clears throat> so I was already feeling the anxiety. My face was flushed. And I go, oh, I, need to, I need to say something. And, and if I didn't say anything, you know, you, know you, you probably would have seen it happening, but you wouldn't have been able to really do anything about it because um, you didn't know if that was something that I needed to stop or if it was okay for the other guy to continue. Um, yeah, so... Um, um, and, you know, we, we had the, 
I stopped the conversation. We had the short discussion, and then we were like on the the Zoom call for like for another hour, hour and a half, or something like that. So, and and by the end of that, I mean, I, uh, typically that kind of inform, that kind of conversation would usually drain me, but I wasn't actually drained at the end of this conversation. Um, but if the if it had originally if it had continued down the path that it was going, I would have been you know completely. Uh, completely out of it and probably would have had to like take a nap just to recover. <clears throat> yeah, and with a situation like that, everyone wins, right? The person who you're interacting with gets some feedback on maybe some of their behavior. They get a closer relationship with you. In different contexts, this wasn't super a work context, but in work context, they get more stuff done and they enjoy their job more because you're interacting with people who respect you and make you feel comfortable being yourself. Um, I, I will say that not easy. Understanding your emotions for some people, and, and for me, I struggle with identifying when I'm like super overwhelmed. But it's uh, the type of thing where you can't just be aware of it. It takes some time, got to work on it. And I found that as I kind of address more efforts to it over the years, I do get better at it. But um, I think that's kind of a common thing where people don't always know exactly how they're feeling at times. But taking the time to reflect can be super helpful. Yeah, and like I said, it doesn't it, – it's a skill that you're going to have to grow over time. Um, I didn't – get to the point where I can know that I'm getting triggered and actually be able to say anything about it. And those are two different types of skills as well. Like, I know I'm being triggered. Well, I'm just going to let this, you know, this person steamroll over me or whatever. But uh, then it's about self-advocacy that we're saying, you know what, I deserve to be treated how I wanted to be treated. And, uh, you know, speaking up for yourself. So um, that's that's a huge deal sometimes for, for, for some, like, like me. Dude, it's so impressive to me how helpful this type of thing is when you actually start implementing it a little bit. Um, like to be able to have others respect you, it's kind of like all in line with respecting yourself and uh, kind of having a more a life that's conducive to you being yourself and comfortable and exploring that kind of stuff. Yeah. Do we have anything else we wanted to talk about on this? <laughs> But I'll say, yeah, that's a really awesome that you allowed that to be an opportunity. Because I think a lot of times in life I've seen people where they maybe aren't treated in a way they're expecting. And rather than communicating that to the other person, there's a miscommunication there because the person doesn't understand they've hurt the other one. And it's just not good. Like there's no end to that situation. Whereas with this one, there was a positive uh, ending where people are better off for it. Yeah, and one of the things that, that I would like to point out, I didn't, whenever I started the conversation, I didn't, you know, or the, the discussion about the, the issue, I didn't say, you are doing this to me. You're, I said, you know, I, I feel, this is how I feel, and, you know, using the I statements. The I statements, is, it puts the, uh, the interaction piece on you, the, the, and because that way you're not, you're not assuming that the other person is coming at it from a different angle or whatever, or with, you know, any malicious intent, you know, you're just saying, no, this is how I feel about this particular thing at this particular time. Um, so yeah, the halting the, the conversation uh, is, is important. The, um, uh, you know, being able to voice your, your, your boundaries also helps establish uh, mutual respect. Uh, Cause like, you know, if, if I voiced my, my boundary and then he did not, you know, uh, the person did not um, respect that boundary, then, you know, the, uh, the, the conversation probably would have ended a lot quicker, but, but he didn't. So there was a lot of mutual respect on both sides. Uh, and, you know, that person also shared a little bit about their, their uh, history as well. So it was, uh, it was actually good. And, and there was a, you know, Definitely a better bond than just, you know, two strangers on a Zoom call. Um, yeah, so, you know, you definitely have the right to establish boundaries and you absolutely have the right to prioritize your well-being and to take care of yourself. Um, you know, just, you know, just because, like, if you're, uh, you know, a content creator or whatever, don't feel bad about not being able to, to push out content for, you know, a week or two weeks or six or eight months like me on my blog sometimes. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, give yourself, forgive yourself for, you know, for some things as well. So um, with, uh, with code, 
you know, you want to have perfect code. What, what do you expect from your code? Well, you know, you're going to have maybe a specific object type, uh, or you can have a list of object types, or maybe it doesn't even do any output at all. Maybe it just like set something in the registry or whatever. Um, so with, uh, with yourself, uh, your output is your, your behavior. You know, like how are you going to respond to certain stimuli? Um, you, um, <clears throat> you should strive to be consistent with everyone around you and with yourself. Like consistency allows them to, you know, allows others to, well, I'm, if I get into this conversation with this guy, you know, I'm going to feel safe about talking with him or with them about things and they're not going to, you know, blow up in my face about things or whatever. Uh, yeah. So the, um, uh, you know, there's, um, lost my train of thought there. <clears throat> so yeah, the, um, uh, wait, wrong one. Yeah. So I guess you want to share sure. something else. You wanna add to that? Um, sure. I can share a little bit about my kind of experience in this regard. And that was, you know, uh, your output is your behavior, right? So strive to be consistent with those around you and yourself. Well, to do that, I feel like you have to have a sense of self, which, you know, can be a hard thing to do. You know, you're not, not everyone kind of becomes an adult and has a well-established sense of self, a long experience of being able to express themselves and be validated and those kinds of things. So for me, I had to spend years uh, kind of growing as a person and understanding who I was. And then once I discovered who I was and I didn't have to pretend, trying to like just be consistent and always the same. You just be yourself in all situations and you're not in situations where there are expectations that are fake, right? Like you've only shown the real version of you. You haven't put on a face. Um, and over time for me, like that kind of ties in with character, right? You're trying to have safety with people. You want to have better communications with people. How do you do that? You be consistent, you be kind, right? And um, it's not like a, I, I like to highlight this because it's not like a selfless thing you massively benefit from having stronger relationships, from having that type of situation you mentioned earlier where you have a miscommunication, you talk about it, and you're closer afterwards, closer than if there would have never been a, an altercation of sorts. Um, yeah, I, I think that it's a, a great thing that really helps create some form of psychological safety. And I can say that as I've grown in this way and spent more time with it, it has definitely um, promoted personal growth and better relationships in my life. Yep. Um, the, um, the next thing to get better code is maybe to have someone review your code. Um, and oftentimes there's, there's going to be like an, even an official code review or whatever. Uh, you know, you can specify, you know, like on GitHub, when you're doing a pull request, you can have a, um, you know, someone to actually review the code for that. Um, and one of the things that happens in a code review is like, uh, you know, the, re the reviewer should offer praise on what you did like really well. Um, and they should also offer, you know, places, well, you were maybe a little weak in this or maybe, you know, this algorithm is not the best one you should use or, you know, have you considered this other thing? Um, and they, they provide a valuable different perspective and they could actually like anticipate where your particular piece of code is going to need to, you know, where it can fit into a larger system. Uh, so when we're talking about peer review with with uh, people and and just mental health is, you know, you can confide in a trusted, supportive friend or family member, um, and and the key there is being trusted and also supportive, because uh, if if you know if you if you know that you can't talk to you know Uncle John about you know, uh, politics, or you know you can't talk to Uncle, you know, uh, Aunt Baru about, um, uh, <laughs> you know, about the, the empire or whatever. You know, you can't, you, you, you know, you can't really, um, you just have to have, you know, the right person to talk to. Um, and when you go to that person, you need to define what you want out of the interaction. Um, and you need to be, you know, open and honest and listen to what they're saying. Yeah. With define your needs, that is such a big one that I learned. It's like when you're talking to someone uh, and when people are talking to you, you don't always need to give advice. That's not always the purpose. And, and when you're asking and trying to get support from someone else, it can be helpful to say, Hey, just look and vent to somebody, not asking for life advice and having people who can allow you to do that can validate your experience and who you are and, help create that psychological safety. 
definitely. And um, of course, the uh, a trusted friend is not always the best person to, uh, to go to. Um, therapy or counseling from mental health pre- professionals is probably going to be your your better bet. Uh, you know, they are trained in in multiple uh, ways of helping you, and also they're going to be much more objective to anything like, you know, your friend or family is going to be very biased um, and they're going to, you know, get, you know, jump on your side, you know, yeah, that person was really mean, you know, mean to you in this situation or whatever, as opposed to saying, you know, well, you know, your actions, you know, in some sense may have actually provoked the the response that you got, you know, so the the healthcare professional is going to be very, uh, uh, should be very, uh, objective and will help you get to where, you know, you're going to be able to uh, help work through your own own issues. And they're also, you know, they're not, they don't have a magic wand. They're not going to tell you how to fix yourself. They're going to guide, you know, provide guidelines and to help steer you down the right path. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and and also they're, they're confidential and professional boundaries. Like, so they can't, they can't talk about you know, when if you're very open with, and you should be very open with your your their therapist, um, you know they can't you know go around and tell you know your cousin or whoever that oh yeah this guy was really saying you know bashing up on you you need to think about you know something they're not going to do that I mean they, they there's laws against that. Um, yeah, it's it's hard for me to think about a situation where, you know, imagine money's not a thing and then accessibility is everywhere, but where having an outside perspective wouldn't be helpful, especially if it's a therapist that you trust and and it works well for you. Um, even if you're not trying to heal or anything like that, you're just trying to be a more efficient human and get some extra perspectives on, hey, I'm not getting the outcomes I want at work or at my social relationships and just getting, you know, a lot of times having that outside perspective even if it's only a few insights you get, can be massively helpful. Um, and yeah, these skills are definitely worth investing in and prioritizing. Yeah, and also one of the things I want to add to that is, um, you know, the the very first therapist you go to may not be the therapist for you. You know, you have to kind of have a a, a connection with with them. Uh, you need to feel like they're actually the right person to help you. Uh, so if you go in and I'll, in a couple of sessions and yeah, it just don't really feel, I don't feel like I'm going down the right path, change paths. I mean, that's, that's important to know when something isn't working for you to, um, to, to, you know, change gears and, and do something else. <clears throat> so I think this might be the last thing, uh, that we're going to be talking about code and, and people. Uh, so for, Better code means that it's, you know, has great documentation, both internally, like your variables are named. You don't have a variable called, you know, dollar I. You have a variable called, you know, um, you know, like dollar table list or whatever. Um, and also you, can, you need to use context-based or external help. And maybe a change log would also assist with that or and just general documentation itself. Uh, now, for uh, for you, uh, you should set and track goals uh, for personal growth. Do uh, you want to tell them how to be smart? <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I don't know if you've had to deal with smart goals in your in your work, but basically, smart is an acronym for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. So, like. Um, I think Josh does a lot of time-bound uh, learning, uh, so he sets goals for himself and and tracks those goals, you know, with with just his you know everyday learning. But you can do the same thing with with your own mental health as well. Um, and um, one of the the last things uh, you can also do, uh, yeah, diary, uh, journaling, or blogging. Uh, some people may not want to put you know their you know their intimate insides out on, you know, on a website somewhere. Uh, so, you know, you'd want to do like the, the personal diary or whatever. Um, also the, uh, the vision boarding, you know, you can, uh, you know, put up, you know, basically the things that you want to change about yourself, you, you put them up on, on a board and then you, you know, did I do well on that today? You know, do a check mark or whatever. 
Um, also, the um, health documents from uh, physical and mental health uh, professionals. Uh, those are you know, actually legit documentation. Um, and the, um, uh, like some, the, you know, any of the results, like uh, somebody was talking about their uh, cholesterol a couple of nights ago, I think, and said, well, I think I've got my cholesterol scores going back to like 1998 you know, in a, a Google sheet somewhere. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's, it's good to keep those. Uh, they help, help, will help you establish baselines. Um, yeah. I just want to say with the whole goals thing, that's great and all, but uh, don't beat yourself up over improving in goals and thinking you should always be better and comparing yourself to others. You know, life can be really challenging, I've found, and always pushing yourself uh, when you're already exhausted can be tough. If you're going through a rough time, take care of yourself. Alter your goals a little bit, you know, but to me, that's the most important part is just take care of yourself. Um, that's true. Um, you mentioned earlier something about psychological safety, and, and I think we should maybe talk a little bit about that now. Um, the um, You should always feel comfortable engaging, even though some topics could be uncomfortable. Um, you know, it's about having candor with colleagues um, with kindness, but it does having psychological safety doesn't necessarily mean that kindness is going to be there. Uh, it would be nice, but it's not a requirement. Um, and also the kind candor requires trust. I mean, like when you bring in, you know, if you start a subject, uh, a topic with somebody, uh, you have to have the general feeling that, you know, they're not going to, you know, go behind your back and tell someone else or they're not going to, just start attacking you because you know your your ideas are diametrically opposed, um, and uh, also psychological state psychological safety also reduces stress and anxiety. Like in the workplace, if you get ready to do something, and you know you take out you know um, I don't know a domain controller or something like that, uh, having psychological safety where like if the organization isn't going to like be punitive because you made a mistake because you're human then that's going to let you maybe do a little more, um, you know, think outside the box and, and come up with new, uh, um, you know, new ways and you know, new solutions to things. Um, also, uh, I just think I just said that. Yeah. So if you, if you actually express yourself, you shouldn't get fired um, unless it's very, very egregious, <laughs> I guess. Um, yeah. So uh, one of the things um, I, I want to kind of, bring up uh, the topic I want to bring up is being neurodivergent, you know, and, and neurotypical. So uh, in this room, there's probably, I don't know, uh, I don't even think there would be half and half neurodivergent versus neurotypical brains. Uh, neurodivergent brains could, you know, we're, we're talking about, uh, you know, people with ADHD, we're talking about people that's on the uh, autism spectrum disorder or ASPE or what used to be called Asperger's syndrome. Um, also, I found out recently that intellectual, intellectual giftedness is also considered neurodivergent. Um, and if discovered early on, would, would get, uh, you know, like if, you, if I was, a, as a kid, if, if they discovered, if I was a kid today, uh, they would see, oh, this guy is intellectually gifted. We need to have, um, we need to provide a supportive system for him because of his neurodivergency. Um, also, neurodivergency includes uh, which th you know, things you might have heard before, like dyslexia, OCD, bipolar, Tourette's, and 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 several others. Uh, so it's not just about ADHD. It's not just about uh, ASD um, and things like that. <clears throat> um, and then, like, what is neurotypical? Well, basically, anyone who is a neurodivergent. Um, and the thing is, that doesn't mean that that either one of these are better than the other ones. We need both types of people in the world, um, you know, very much so. Um, but yeah, to me, diversity is very important in every way, from the previous jobs you've had to gender to uh, neurodivergent versus neurotypical. It's so helpful for every um, situation to have multiple perspectives. And it, it makes sense that smart organizations 
try to find the strengths in people and take advantage of it, right? Every single person's different. We all have different strengths and weakness, weaknesses and putting ourselves in positions to succeed uh, in, you know, in being in cultures where you're psychologically safe enough and where people allow you to be yourself and set boundaries and communicate is really helpful. Right. Um, so uh, neurodivergency, neurodivergent individuals could also experience like, uh, or can experience, um, uh, you know, either functional or, or executive functioning or emotional um, differences, uh, sensory processing, uh, things like that. So uh, I, I just want to get to the, to the next slide about uh, you may have, I, I don't know if you've actually realized, but there's a lot of um, late in life diagnoses that's been happening over the last two or three years. Uh, one of the reasons for that is, you know, a little thing called the pandemic changed how everything happened. You know, uh, virtually everything became virtual. Uh, so uh, you had um, more time uh, because you weren't maybe doing the commute or whatever, and you had more time to yourself. And, and also you were probably stuck in, um, you know, in a home with other people having to interact with them every day, every minute. Uh, and, you know, some, there were some uh, relationships that just didn't, you know, couldn't survive that. Um, and uh, also there's more, a lot more people sharing their personal information and experiences like me. I mean, I'm, I'm sharing my experience here. Uh, there's, you know, there's like a whole group of people on TikTok that's sharing their own neurodivergent experiences. Um, so the um, uh, current studies now show that like one in 20 people have ADHD. 6% uh, of that is, um, has an official diagnosis, but even less than six of that has autism. Um, so uh, I think I got most of this from, from like a, um, a, a therapist that's on TikTok that, that does, uh, you know, uh, specific work with autistic individuals and, and people with ADHD. Uh, and he himself has, has uh, ADHD. Um, but uh, one of the things here, uh, like the last piece, the diagnostics are expensive, uh, not covered by insurance. That, that is absolutely true. Uh, I recently had a diagnostic and it was like, like twenty four fifty or something like that, uh, that I had to pay out of pocket just to just find out, you know, why am I so different? And it's not because I'm broken. It's not because aliens messed around with my parents' DNA, which I had told people since I was a kid. Uh, it's because I am, you know, I am an Aspie, like you know, Asperger's syndrome. Uh, so it's like it was very validating to find out, you know, what I I have. This is why I am so weird and so different. And it made me feel really great to, to finally have that, that validation. Um, and uh, I, guess, I guess the next thing is, you know, we're going to throw out some quotes for, from some really smart people like uh, Picard. Uh, you have to measure yourself, uh, your, your successes or your failures within, not from anything that, that I or anyone else may think. Uh, and for me, that's a huge challenge because my, my self-worth has always been based on can I make someone laugh or how smart am I, uh, you know, how valuable am I to other people, not just I have value by myself. Um, also, uh, one of the things that Picard said, it's possible to commit no mistakes and still lose. Um, and that's not a weakness, that's life. So, you know, just because, you know, something that you did didn't work out right, it's okay that things happen like that. And you need to be able to uh, accept things uh, when it doesn't work out like you want. Also, the only person you're truly competed against is yourself. And I think maybe Don, mentions, uh, Don Jones mentioned something like that. It's like, you should only ever compare yourself with your previous self. Don't compare yourself with someone else. Uh, that in its, of itself should help alleviate all imposter syndrome because imposter syndrome is about us you know, uh, comparing ourselves like, oh my gosh, there's no way that I can ever be, you know, on the equal of this person or that person, you know, but guess what? They feel the same way about someone else and someone down, you know, that, that maybe knows less about you about a, about a particular topic. They also feel the same thing about you. It's like, oh my gosh, you know, here's the pedestal. I'm going to like worship you and things. But, but the thing is, it's not, you know, when you compare yourself, always compare yourself like, have I grown since yesterday? Have I grown, you know, uh, since maybe breakfast, if you had a really huge breakfast? Um, 
But uh, also another weird, uh, another smart guy. You don't need to be defined by your job, said by Weird Al. Um, so, you know, you, you need to have your own self-identity. Also something, um, live the life you want to live. You know, be as weird as you want to be. Believe me, you will never find true happiness until you accept who you are. And that's from a, a new, uh, like, 2023 20, movie, the weird the Al Yankovic story with uh, Daniel Radcliffe. It was awesome. If you haven't seen it, it's on uh, Roku uh, channel for free. Uh, so, yeah, do you, anyone have any questions? So how can you identify toxicity in the workplace? Um, what was the second part? company politics or interpersonal relationships at work. Um, so that, that's, that's, I don't know if we have enough time for that. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I, I have uh, lucky or unlucky to be able to have been in several toxic, toxic situations before. Uh, there was one time that my entire department was split, that's 12 people. We were split between the developers and, and the systems people. I mean, it was a legit split like that. Um, and one of the things that you know, once the people that was causing the toxicity was out, then we came back together and we were a stronger, you know, more cohesive team. And I think that's actually where I started learning about the, you know, being able to speak developer uh, as opposed to just speaking only, only that. Um, and then there was another time when, um, um, yeah, th th that's, that's a large topic and maybe something that should be like a, a blog post or something like that. Not a good answer, but it helps to have positive experiences to be like, oh, this isn't like that one. But I think so many of us have only experienced kind of crappy work environments. Um, so that's where I think having a community that you're part of outside of your job where you can maybe have some friends express what's going on at work and they can give you the perspective check of like, that doesn't sound quite right. Um, kind of tap into a larger perspective base. But and Any other questions? I mean, we, yeah, go ahead. Um, so you mentioned that being neurodivergent doesn't mean you're broken, uh, and and that's a great point. Uh, I think a lot of times we feel like, uh, you know, it means you know we're not normal. Uh, we need to be more like other people. Um, uh, so I was diagnosed with ADHD last year, um, and I, I can't say that it has had a a significant negative effect on my life. But knowing that I uh, that I I have this uh, disorder, I guess. Uh, has allowed me to to recognize when I'm hyper focusing on something and how that could influence um, my role at work or uh, personal relationships, uh, my sleep patterns, and, um, and it's just been really helpful. And and sharing that with my coworkers who I I have that trust with uh, has it gives them the opportunity to recognize if I'm maybe spending a little bit too much time on this topic. You know, you know Josh is hyper focused right now is you need to pull them out and work on something else or, or what have you. Um, and your, you know, ADHD, your autism, um, uh, what have you, it gives you, uh, you know, advantages in, and you're able to do different tasks better than, than other people, um, in some cases. So, um, I just thought that was a great, great point. I just want this for the, the mic for, for prosperity. I, 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 just, I just want to just let you know, like, you're not alone either. Like, so many of us struggle with this in silence, and because we don't share it, we feel like it's just me. And, and, and in many cases, if, like, like, you know, the good communication, like, if you feel like you're heading towards burnout, you don't have to wait to your burnout to tell your manager I'm burned out. You guys should say, you know, I have it under control right now, but I'm getting the feeling like I'm heading down this path. Like, give them that early warning so that they know that you might be struggling a little bit, before it's a real problem that you're having to really cope with. But yeah, like, it's like, it's easy to see me, you know, uh, some of the work I've done in the community, but you don't see like, you know, I have, I have ADHD or you know, I've had, you know, struggles with depression myself. It's just that you don't see that side of me because of all the other things that, you know, we do in the community. It's just, yeah, you're not alone. Is there any other questions, comments, anything like that? I mean, I think we've already way, well, went way over our time. Uh, about like three minutes. So, uh, any anything else? Yes. 
Um, and speaking of like healthy work environments, my several of my managers have like given our teams permission where, you know, if you have to like skip a meeting just to like go for a walk or whatever you do to like cope with your mental health. So, for example, um, like for the first round, the first um hour of the uh, sessions this morning, I had to like leave and I just went and ran around in some circles in the gym just so I could like sit still and like be tentative for the rest of the day. And so even though I felt guilty for missing um, a really good session, I felt like it was really beneficial for my mental health and having that clarity for the rest of the day. So I think it's important to just be able to like take a time out and do whatever you need to do to give yourself that capacity to kind of like have a success, like a successful and efficient kind of day. Sure. Is there any anything else? Oh, we got one more, or maybe maybe more. Yeah. Since we are on that topic, um, like Andrew was saying, um, I think it's really also really important. And as you also said, um, therapy is like better than uh, your friends uh, in that sense because, what like like. Dave was saying, your friends are biased. Like, oh, I, I won't going to say that to not to hurt your feelings. Or I think that you are not okay. So, uh, yeah, let me try to divert that path. And that might actually uh, be worse than actually speaking to a therapy and say like, okay, this happened during this time or on this workplace. Um, and this, uh, someone was bad, someone was mean. And they say like, but what did you say? And once you reflect on that, it's like, oh yeah, maybe... Uh, I didn't say something wrong. And whereas if you speak with some friend, they would say, yeah, your, your colleague is really a jerk. Like, it doesn't deserve that. It just don't, don't mind that. Um, but yeah, and, and also, like Andrew was saying, that, that, that's the point that I want to focus the most. Um, even if it's not, uh, it's, if you, even if you don't feel that nothing is wrong with you, uh, therapy can be, re be really helpful, uh, not only for mindfulness and reflection, but also for facts like, uh, I'm good at something, but I want to be better. Or uh, I'm really good at work, but I want to improve my social skills. Uh, how can I do that? And being talking with someone from the outside, uh, most of the time, uh, it's it might be even better than talking to your friends. Also, I can say from experience, um, the therapists have tools in their toolbox that they can give you. Um, that will help you cope with those things the next time. So if you're turning to your friends for help, they're just going to, they're, they're going to basically tell you what you want to hear. They acknowledge your pain, um, but they don't really help you move on through that. And, um, a therapist has a lot of tools that they can, uh, turn on for you. And there's actually, you know, different types of therapy, um, like uh, CBT, the cognitive behavioral therapy, uh, may not be the best for someone that is uh, exceptionally gifted uh, because they can out, the, 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 the therapist would have to be able to out uh, uh, cognition the other person that they're, that they're actually treating. Uh, so um, yeah, there's, you know, again, different, different types of therapy, uh, but you know, the best thing, the first step is to think, I definitely need to get, you know, in front of a, in front of someone who is trained to help me, you know, um, navigate the, the, the difficulties of life or, or whatever with, uh, you know, with the right therapy and, and the right guidance. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think this, uh, one of the best quotes that I heard is that if you feel that your problems are like uh, bad for you to share with a therapist, they, they'll think that you are insane or something like that. Uh, most people do that and they are trained to hear that every day. So if it helps you, think that if you think that something is really bad with you, uh, maybe they've heard someone, something bad or worse from someone else. Uh, but either way, they are trained. Uh, they don't judge you. Like they've said, and that's really important. They, they, it's by law they are uh, obliged not to share anything. Uh, everything is confidential, so uh, you are in a safe environment for that. Unless you have ideations of self harm, and then in which case they will probably um, help you much much quicker with other people being brought in, and and then like a like a three day psych eval or something. So I, I think we're going to wrap it up because we're already like almost 10 minutes. Oh, oh. <laughs> Just 
I love to talk about the therapy stuff, but I want to go back to the workplace thing a little bit. And I think that you want friends and you want to work at a place where they want you to be your best, where they identify that in order for you to do your best work, you have to be well. And sometimes that means skipping out on a meeting. Sometimes that means t- being super burnt out and taking two weeks of work and having a manager that you can communicate that with. I guess with it, uh, does your work care about how you feel and understand that they're trying to empower you to do great things? Do they see the value in you? Are they trying to tap into it? Um, are they flexible or are they very rigid and expecting you to be this person and do things this exact way? Um, but yeah, I think our, our goal for this was to open the door for more conversation, add some language, get things started. Um, and I think that uh, appreciate everyone for listening for us and, and giving us that opportunity. Yeah, and speaking of open the door, we can open the door if you're hungry and make your way to Washington.